Around 30% of internet users rely on proxies, but figuring out what is proxy and what it actually does isn't easy. When I first looked it up, I struggled to understand how proxies worked, how they differed from VPNs, and how they were used in things like web scraping. But now I've got it all figured out. And in this video, I'll break it down in plain English and help you pick the right proxy while we're at it. So back to our initial query, what is proxy? Simply put, it's a server that acts as a middleman between the user and the internet. Instead of our computers connecting directly to the internet, it first establishes a connection with the proxy server, which then hides our IP, providing more privacy and speed by caching frequently visited pages. This may sound suspiciously familiar. Isn't this what VPNs do? Not exactly. If we think of a proxy as a middleman who just changes your name on the internet's guest list, then a VPN is a middleman who shields any communications you have on the web. So why would someone choose a proxy instead of a VPN? A VPN is just better, right? This is where things get a bit complicated. Proxies are faster than VPNs, more accessible, and cost less. And on top of all these benefits, one of the main proxy use cases is web scraping, where bots collect data from websites like prices and reviews. But my personal favorite use case is accessing streaming services without making my internet connection slower. VPNs can sometimes turn your online experience into a slog, especially if you connect to faraway servers, like from the US to Japan. With a proxy, my speed retention is better. Now that we know what is proxy server, let's discuss the type of proxies available. One thing to note is that the list of proxies is quite long, so I boiled it down to the four most common types. Keep in mind that if you're already thinking that having a proxy sounds cool, you can grab a discount on any of the four we cover in this video. Just check the links in the description to save some cash. Let's start with residential proxies. They use IP addresses from real homes, assigned by the internet providers, so they look just like regular people browsing from their own devices. In my opinion, this type offers one of the best cost to anonymity ratios. While using this kind of proxy, your traffic looks organic, making it difficult for platforms hosting geo-specific content to detect and block your internet traffic. This makes a residential proxy great for web scraping. However, there is a con. The residential proxy is the most in-demand type of proxy, making it pretty pricey. Next up are data center proxies. These are artificially created in data centers, making them less organic than residential ones straight out of the gate. However, data center proxies are fast and reliable at a low cost. This makes data center proxies attractive to those who are looking to web scrape or employ large-scale data mining operations. Of course, there's the obvious con of these types of proxies being easier to detect. That said, if you need a fast connection, these proxies will work great for you. Just don't forget to grab the discount code in the description. The third type of proxy I wanna cover are mobile proxies. IP addresses assigned by mobile carriers to smartphones and tablets. These are good for social media management. Another great use case is for ad verification to ensure that advertisements are running as intended. Mobile proxies allow users to simulate real user behavior and verify ad placements. All of this is nice, but there is a downside. The biggest mobile proxy con is that it's less versatile than other proxies. This is due to the inherent nature of mobile IP addresses. Lastly, I wanna talk about ISP proxies. An ISP proxy boasts reliability and speed when compared to data center proxies, all while appearing as authentic as residential proxies. Generally, ISP proxies are hosted in data centers, but use IP addresses provided by real network providers, making them appear as regular residential users. The strongest trait of ISP proxies is versatility. These proxies can run on websites where legitimacy and speed are both required. It's the perfect fit for web scraping on sites with moderate anti-bot measures, accessing content, or managing multiple social media accounts. However, an ISP proxy is not as anonymous as a residential proxy. So this is worth keeping in mind if you plan on conducting business where privacy is crucial. An ISP proxy also typically costs more than the other types, but that's not surprising since it offers a lot of premium functionality. Speaking of functionality and privacy, it's crucial to do your research when choosing a proxy provider. Otherwise, there's a massive risk of being compromised. Legal issues, data breaches, and involvement in cybercrime are all feasible outcomes if the servers you're getting your proxies from aren't ethical. I highly recommend verifying that the provider you choose adheres to ethical standards and complies with all laws to make sure that you're protecting your security, privacy, 
and your reputation. As an example, Dakota checks all of these boxes. Their prices are good, the company's reputation is great, and most importantly, it ethically sources its servers. There's a link in the description below for a discount, or you can simply scan the QR code on screen. Anyway, here are the key takeaways from today's video. As with all things in life, choosing the best proxy server depends on your needs. Residential proxies offer the highest reliability, data center proxies are the best for speed, and mobile proxies are the best for mobile environment-related tasks. Lastly, ISP proxies are a fancy combination of data center and residential proxies, offering high reliability with good speeds. Quick question before you go, which type of proxy do you prefer and why? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.